This class is concerned with levels of information. Now organizations process information for effective decision making and to reduce risk and uncertainty. So there is a purpose in acquiring information. Information starts life as data which is then processed into information and the whole purpose of the exercise is to help management make good decisions and to try to reduce risk and uncertainty. You may view uh, the whole process in terms of the McKinsey statement here which suggests that organizations are open systems that must process information but have limited capacity and generally speaking that's true of all of us we have limited knowledge we're trying to acquire information all the time we are surrounded by data and we try to use the data to process it into information so we can make better decisions about the environment in which we live and the processes that we go through and the same with organizations so organizations are confronted by a lack of information and they have very limited capacity to do anything about it but the information that they do have is processed um, to complete internal tasks and to coordinate diverse activities and to interpret the external environment according to McKinsey. So whatever information companies can come across they're trying to use that to help them to uh, better organize themselves internally and to coordinate their activities within the marketplace and also to interpret what's happening within the the business and the economic environment and the political environment in which they find themselves. So information is crucial. Information is essential and there is a real thirst for information on the part of companies. Companies are constantly trying to acquire data which they can process into information which will give them a competitive advantage. Now information exists at three levels strategic, tactical and operational and we're going to look at each of these in the remainder of this session. So we're going to look at the levels of management decisions um, and the information. Well the first one is the first level is operational which is really the province of junior management and here the decisions are routine they generally speaking involve day-to-day -day decisions how to organize a, a particular part of the work and um, ordering replacement stock and uh, keeping the the aisles uh, the, the oil I should say of the company uh, keep, keeping it keeping it running keeping the keeping the business up and running so these are essential uh, tasks. So operational is what gets things done. Operational is doing the job. Then we've got tactical. Tactical is the province, generally speaking, of middle management. Uh, this level up, obtains and analyzes current information and the information is then used to try and gain a competitive advantage. So they're trying to satisfy short-term goals. They're trying to produce a good product, have a good position in the market, um, organize themselves efficiently, look for efficiency savings, um, and then communicate that back to the operational level to get the operational level to change its practices uh, to be more efficient. And then, of course, it also will only do this if it fits in with what top management want. So tactical decision makers are ones in between. They're in, in the middle. The very top level is the strategic uh, management. 
and this is where risk and uncertainty is confronted. This is where decisions are made regarding the product to be produced, the quantity of the product, the design, entering new markets, um, the type of personnel that should be engaged, and so on. These are the big decisions. And what the, the strategic analysts are trying to do is to position the company overall in the market. Once it's decided which market to operate in and which products to make, the tactical management will then take those decisions and try to look for efficiencies and better ways of doing it and uh, making sure that the, the business is running effectively and communicate this at the operational level to make sure that the product is actually being produced. So we have three layers of decision makers. Now let's look at these in a little more detail, starting with strategic information. It's used by senior management, as I said earlier, and it's used for devising goals. And these goals shape the direction of the business. So the strategic management set the course for the business, what the business is attempting to do, which markets uh, it's targeting, uh, the product it's making. It's entrepreneurial. It's that level of decision making in which the overall risk and uncertainty of what they're doing is confronted. These decision makers confront the risk and uncertainty. It helps management assess organizations' current goals and it reviews strategies for improvement. So the strategic level of the business is concerned with what the business is doing and if it should be doing something else. It's always on the lookout for improvements, for new products, for related products, for new markets, for ways of developing the market. So it's it's aimed at looking at the position of the business and the future positions of the business and the future opportunities that the business may create or may capitalize on. And again, information uh, can be divided into internal and external sources. Uh, the internal source of information for the strategic analyst is profit obviously, sales, number of employees, resources, cash flow. So in making strategic decisions the decision makers must have access to this information. And this information will enable them to make realistic decisions. The external will also be taken into account. The economy, the competitors, the suppliers, the customers. Essentially they will look at a SWOT, a strength, Strengths, Weakness, Opportunities and Threats analysis. They'll look at a SWOT analysis and they'll look at a, a PESTEL, the Political, Economic, Social, Technological, Legal Environments. So they will look at forces outside of the business in terms of PESTEL, the Economic, the Social, the Technological, the Legal, to so look at those aspects when making decisions about the business. We will also look at internally what are its areas of advantage, what are its unique selling points, what is the what's the SWOT, what's the strength, what's the weakness, what's the opportunity, what's the threat. So they will make decisions based on this type of uh, framework. Now, strategic information, well, it helps uh, management make informed decisions which offer a competitive advantage over the competitors. That's why strategic information is so important. Once the analysis has been done, they have strategic information. They have processed the data, the data from the internal sources of data and the external sources of data and now they're, they're trying to create a competitive advantage for the business. 
The information is used also to implement new strategies, introduce new products and new policies, invest in uh, new machinery or move the location of the business or outsource parts of the business or look for globalized opportunities and so on. So it's operating at the top level of the business and it's looking at the overall framework within which the business operates. The internal and external information is vital for management. Um, the information however should be accurate. If it's not accurate it can be dangerous. So it's imperative that the decision makers, the, the strategic decision makers, try to ensure that the information they're using is good information. It's accurate and it's applicable in their context. Now let's move to tactical information. This is used by middle management, for example managers from different departments from finance, HR, marketing etc, production, distribution and so on. The level requires information for planning and control operations. So at this level pricing will be worked out, distribution channels, purchasing, inventory control, the the stores will be uh, planned, production control will be put into place, quality um, concerns will be looked at, uh, quality framework will be worked out, um, training for employees, motivation, leadership. So this is the, the nitty gritty of production. This is where that overall environment within the business is planned out by the, at the tactical level. So management receive information and instructions from senior management. The strategic decisions are passed down to the tactical level and they are operated upon at the tactical level. The tactical level tries to implement the strategic decisions. So top management hand down the strategic decisions to the tactical level who try to implement them. Now tactical information, well the information should be reliable and it should also be reliant on internal sources of information. The, the data uh, should be communicated in reports and there should be internal uh, processes for communications and for uh, accurate communications I should say and also for reporting to show how the strategic decisions have been translated into operational decisions at the bottom level. How the tactical level has moved the big decision, the, the strategic decision, into something which is being currently used and processed at, the, at all levels of the organization. Now information at the tactical level involves um, productivity measurements. So the tactical decision makers will need to know about productivity, about uh, what is the output per worker, what is the output per, per machine and uh, what is the, the output per vehicle on the road. They will need to know all sorts of facts and figures about the business. They will need to have budgets and financial statements which enable them to get a feeling for what they've got to work with, what, what's the resources that they've, they've been allocated. So the, the strategic decisions should be realistic and they should be financed, there should be budgets to enable the tactical managers to implement the strategic decisions. They should be aware of cash flow because the timing of their uh, their work may uh, have cash flow implications. So they should know about cash flow and they should know about profits as well uh, within the business. Um, they should also be aware of any forecasts, particularly from marketing regarding sales, 
projected sales, changes in the market, and so on. Um, inventory levels. They should be aware of the policy uh, that's been used in the stores. Um, how are how is um, store output being priced? Is it last in, first out, first in, first out? Um, what's the lead time on deliveries? How secure are deliveries from uh, suppliers? So the the tactical managers need a whole variety of information and information sources. They should also be aware of any strategic decisions to innovate the product and for looking at changes in the direction in which the business is moving. So the strategic decisions should be as open as possible so that the, the tactical managers are able to factor in any proposed changes in the future. Now let's turn to the operational information. This is used by the, the frontline managers. This is day-to-day -day running the business. These managers are the ones who do the work. They, they've been told what to do by the, by the tactical level. The tactical level are implementing the strategic decisions. So the tactical level tell the operational people what they want and the operational people sit about doing it. These are the, the managers who ensure that the output is actually produced. And information that they require is uh, obtained internally. It's obtained daily by looking at output, looking at uh, performance, performance of workers, performance of machines, um, issues about acquiring raw materials from the stores and packaging and delivery, logistics and so on. So it's, it's aimed at the, the nitty-gritty of the business. It's actually doing the job. Now the information at the operational level, well at this level this includes details of debtors and creditors to ensure that uh, the output is going to the right people. So that they know who the orders are coming from and they know who who are good customers, who are not so good customers, who pay on time, who don't pay on time and they're able to flag up any issues surrounding orders received by um, the order department. They're also able to keep um, an eye on customer complaints. The sales department, the marketing department, will normally pass on information about complaints from customers and feedback from customers related to the quality of the product. So the operational level, the, the managers are able to keep an eye on um, the quality of the product. And likewise, in the marketing department, the, the personnel there, the operational people at the marketing level, can have more effective communications with the customers. But they're also able to look at the hours worked by employees and how much the employees are paid. And they're able to look at deliveries and able to ensure that allowing for lead times and capacity within the stores and usage rates and seasonal factors that they've got enough raw materials and enough, enough components to continue to um, produce. They're also able to look at weekly sales and work out what's the, the pattern of weekly sales or monthly sales and ensure that they're able to factor in any seasonal factors. So operational information is highly detailed it's task specific, it's related to particular tasks and it's routinely measured. Generally speaking it's measured every day or it's measured every week. Um, the operational managers will know what's happened on a day-to-day -day basis, they'll know what's happened on a, a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. So 
they have very detailed knowledge of the practicality of doing the job. So operational information is a reliable source of information which impacts on decision making at all levels. The operational managers feed it back to the tactical. The tactical can in turn feed it back to the strategic. So strategic decisions are realistic. They know what can be done at an operational level. And the tactical know what's reasonable to, uh, to ask of the operational managers. So there are three layers of decision makers. The strategic at the very top, positioning the business within the market and looking at the direction in which the business is moving, taking risk into account and uncertainty. The tactical who's trying to work out how the decisions at the strategic level can be implemented what's the best way to do this and the operational is actually doing it so three levels let's take particular sectors and look at the way the particular sectors um, typical situations in, in, in sectors and let's take for example the electricity supply sector now at the strategic level we have issues like long-term fuel costs and availability. Uh, they're going to produce electricity. They need to know how much it will cost to produce it. They'll also want to know about the technical developments in generating a plant. Should it be nuclear? Should it be green? Wind power? Solar power? Should it be oil? I mean, how should it be produced? what are the, the, the technical issues and also what's the long-term demand for electricity will we want more of it will we want the same how is that estimated so strategic information could relate to these three factors and strategic decision makers will have to try and get some insight into these before it can answer the question how much electricity to produce. At the tactical level they need to look at seasonal fluctuations in demand. For example in winter we may require more energy because winters are cold, uh, we use more electricity. Um, we also have to look at changing fuel costs. Oil may change in price and coal may change in price and even nuclear power is not a constant so there are different costs and at the tactical level they also have to look at maintenance and replacement of equipment how much equipment should they have how much generating capacity do they require um, if it's not enough there will be shortages of electricity there will be blackouts and customers will not be happy if there's too much then they have wasted resources in building generating capacity that's not being required so it's a question of getting exactly the right amount but it takes a long time to build a generating station so how do they know what the demand will be in five years or in ten years time so risk and uncertainty in the decision making process is really difficult and at the strategic level they're, they're facing almost impossible questions. At the tactical level they have to try and make the most of the decisions that were made and try to implement those decisions. At the operational level the managers there must ensure that the equipment is working, it's maintained the breakdowns are avoided or brought back online as quickly as possible. They also want to avoid labour disputes, problems with the workers, grievances that the workers may have about certain processes or certain routines, so they need to address the concerns of the workers. And they've also got issues about meeting the demand. 
sometimes there is a peak in demand um, perhaps over the Christmas period over festive uh, periods there may be a peak in demand and it may be a question of buying in electricity from elsewhere from other countries to try and meet that peak so we can see the strategic tactical and operational decisions at different levels in the context of electricity um, supply we could also see it in terms of supermarkets um, at a strategic level customer attitudes to products based on standards of living sometimes uh, customers attitudes change and change as their living standards increase they may start to buy more of certain products and less of others but there's also there are issues about the long term availability of foodstuffs uh, world populations increasing um, the supply of land is probably reducing because we're building on it so the amount of food available is becoming shorter and shorter which means prices are rising and the pressure for uh, for land means that uh, the quantity of goods and the variety of goods may not match expectations so strategic management in the context of supermarkets need to be aware of these factors but also they have to be aware of where the customers are living for example there may be new housing developments in certain areas and the supermarkets may want to open branches there to meet the demand of that part of the population again a strategic decision uh, is it a good idea to open in a particular area where there's a new housing centre? Tactical information, well, there are seasonal variations in demand. At festive seasons, people demand more. Um, there's also seasonal variations in supplies, for example, in fruit and vegetables. Uh, sometimes particular fruit will be available, other times it won't and also dealing with issues surrounding the the labor force looking at grievances that workers may have in particular circumstances and trying to resolve those issues at the operational level it's dealing with um, stock items making sure that the stock is displayed properly making sure that the items are in stock and on the shelves and that they, they meet health and safety regulations they're not out of date they're not dangerous uh, looking at pricing and making sure that it's clear to the customer what items cost and dealing with uh, shortages of labor or absenteeism perhaps people not turning up to work and making sure that the business is running these are operational issues but you can also have it within government departments in uh, an education department for example at the strategic level it could be looking at the birth rate it could be looking at how, how many babies are born and in four or five years time will there be school places to accommodate that uh, number of children who were born and will teachers be trained to make sure that they're there to teach the the children when they arrive and the school buildings making sure that they're adequate and safe and secure so there are issues at the strategic level even within an education department and also at a tactical level um, what's the the current age group populations of the children what resources are required at different levels um, do children in secondary schools need more resources than children in primary schools or people at university do they need more resources than primary schools and what's the balance um, how is how is that worked out and looking at the equipment and the books that are available 
looking at the resources that are available other than the teachers. And then looking at the teacher availability as well and looking at the teachers requirements to make sure that they have the resources to do the job. So these are tactical decisions. And then we've got operational ones looking at staff illness when staff are not actually in the school. How can the operational level uh, deal with this? For example in the school the headmaster or the headmistress may have to make decisions about staffing if, if people are away ill. Uh, may have to look at transport problems, how to move children to uh, different locations, perhaps for field work or for geography classes where the, the students need to leave the building and go to a different centre. But also looking at um, pupil absenteeism if children are missing from school, why? And dealing with that issue. These are operational. So we can see even within a government department, an education department, we have strategic information, tactical and operational information. The same as in commercial business. Um, now I'm just going to do a couple more, but I'm not going to do them in great detail. Just skip through them quickly. Uh, you can go back over this, stop the video and rewind it later and and look at it in more detail. But we could do it by sector. We don't have to do it by a particular company. We could do, for example, manufacturing and say strategic information, manufacturing, well, future demand, the state of the economy, how many people are working, um, what's the rate of inflation, and so on. Product development, so how fast are products being developed, what's the rate of technical progress. So manufacturing will have strategic information. Um, it'll also have tactical looking at stock turnover and the profit and loss within the sector. And at the operational it'll be looking at materials, labour, stock levels, distribution, uh, motivation with, within the workforce. It'll be looking at uh, nitty-gritty issues that'll ensure that manufacturing can um, prosper. So we have, even within broad sectors like manufacturing, we can see where strategic, tactical and operational inf um, information is required. Within services, we have manufacturing just done, so services, the tertiary sector as it's called, we have strategic information, uh, sales growth, profit, market share, and at the tactical we have customer complaints, customer satisfaction and the resources that are required to provide the service. And these are very brief, uh, very simple terms I'm using. In, in a, a more detailed study obviously you will fill these out considerably. But these are some of the essential issues. And at the operational in the services you could have staff pay wages, uh, ordering stocks and daily sales. So we've got again three levels of information, strategic, tactical and operational within a broad service sector. And as I said a moment ago, if you were doing this in practice for a particular sector you will have a lot more headings under each of these uh, broad areas. So under tactical you might have, not three, but you might have ten, fifteen of them, whatever. But the idea is just to show the difference between strategic, tactical and operational. In the public, well we have the strategic information for public services or looking at public um, uh, provision of goods. We have the demographics, how old is the population, what's the birth rate, what's the death rate. Uh, we have government policy, what does the government want to do because the government's elected by the people so uh, it takes first call. Uh, what's the census? Uh, the census is the information picked up uh, on the population every say five years. But what does the census tell us about the the profile of the population. 
at the tactical level uh, we could be looking at crime rates or at health services or at education so again we're getting we're moving from policy strategic down to tactical tactical is looking at the facts and figures in more detail and applying the strategic decisions if the government says we should spend more on education then at the tactical level that may mean taking resources away from the police or away from health and giving it to education but the government has been elected by the people to implement its policy and if that's the policy then the tactical will want to move resources in favour of what the government said. Operational, well looking at daily records, daily um, sources of information and looking at um, staff timesheets and how staff are applying themselves and looking at uh, the physical resources that they've got and the maintenance of the physical resources and so on under this heading I've just listed two well clearly in practice if we were doing this we might have a lot more, we might have 20, 30 different points here um, but what we can see here is that this idea of strategic, tactical and operational applies to companies, small companies, big companies the public sector, it applies to different sectors, you could, you could look at strategic decisions within engineering and the big issues, strategic uh, issues in engineering, the strategic issues in health provision, the strategic issues in uh, education, and you can also do it for tactical within education, within engineering, within health and so on, and operational. So it's highlighting the difference of the three levels at which decisions are made strategic, tactical and operational. That's a, a source that was used in the preparation of this and that's all I'm going to do in this session so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.